Brought to you by a paid sponsorship for the Hit Point Press Humblewood Tales Kickstarter. Many DMs, especially those that started before 5th edition, rule that any time you roll a nat 1, meaning a 1 on a d20, not only would you fail, regardless of bonuses, but you would fail in spectacular fashion. Now, finally, after years of preparation, and with the artifact of Hemendal, we banish you from these... Oh, okay. This is what lots of people mean when they say crit fail or fumble. Sometimes when people say crit fail or fumble, other people say something like, Crit fails don't exist in 5e, old man! But crit fails do still exist in 5e. Those interested in a hearty um actually, check somewhere around 242 of the old 5e DMG. It's in a section on interesting ways DMs can adjudicate role resolution. There's actually a lot of cool stuff in there about degrees of failure and success, but this video isn't about that, so, so let's talk about crit fails which have been separated into two sort of branches, the attack branch and the ability check slash save branch. Attacks fail on a natural one, no matter your bonuses, there's no further consequence, and it's not even called a crit fail. What's actually called a critical failure in the DMG only happens on ability checks and saves, where it's worth noting, you can still succeed, even on a natural one if you have sufficient bonuses to hit the DC. But if you roll a nat one, and you fail. The DM can rule that it's a critical failure, unless they don't feel like it, or they forget, or they're a coward. It's not like honor scores or multi-classing where it has to be agreed upon ahead of time. It's sort of done on a case-by-case -case basis, and you can just do it. Although, it would be a good idea to give people a heads up. Having said all that, I do things the old way. A one fails no matter what. Fuck your bonuses, it's catastrophic. Does it hurt characters with multi-attack? Yes. How do I balance that? I don't, well, I've got a whole thing, but it doesn't matter. I mean, you know what, I, no, I can tell you about bup, it. Bup, 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 bup. That's not what we're don't talking about, Larry. Me. I'm trying to- Okay, to offset the bad crits, I make good crits better, narratively, uh, and then to offset the multi-attack thing, I like to use my own sort of homebrew version of massive damage. If you do more than half of an NPC's remaining HP in a single hit, they drop. That's cool for everybody, but it makes crit successes better because they're more likely to drop an enemy in one hit. Now, all of that said, it's perfectly reasonable not to like crits, and, and, and they don't have to be in your game. I like crits because they're fun. They make the whole table go, ah! They make people pay attention more to the rolls. They, they raise the tension, and I honestly love them. But to survive a table using botches, you're gonna need the right die. Where's he been? Making episodes. There's gonna be a new episode on this channel every Thursday till midway through June, at which point hopefully we're gonna keep making them. Do you like these sorts of ideas? Do you subscribe to these sorts of notions? Then I'll see you next Thursday. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Um, it was brought to you by a paid sponsorship for the Humblewood Tales Kickstarter. That's a new adventure book for the Humblewood setting with over 200 pages of monsters, magic items, adventures, and more. Check out the link in the description and hurry, it ends Thursday.